So this after show only shows up on YouTube. It's, I figure it's people who get like really excited about my guests and who are like, oh my gosh, that was such a cool person. They're such an interesting character. I wish I could see more about them. So I give them an after show so they can get to know my guests a little bit better in a sh in an after show I call last call because last call is at the end of the night. When it's last call, you've been drinking a little bit. You're more friendly, more open, telling people your life story. And also it's last call when we let the dogs out for the last, the, the end of the night. You know, I'm like, last call, everybody who wants to go out, go. So um, it worked. So this is actually inspired by Inside the Actor's Studio. Did you ever watch that? show i did a couple times yes okay good yes. so james lipton used to ask all of his guests the same questions at the end and it's called the pivot questionnaire which actually originated on a french show that he used for his show but i made all of these questions pet related they're just inspired by the pivot questionnaire all right let's do all it all right let's go favorite breed doberman Ooh, that's a new one. Why? I've had two Dobermans in my life. And They're uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two rescue Dobermans. They're beautiful. I thought my Titan was a Dobie mix for a really long time. He's not. He's like a Bos Boseron, something like that mix. Mm -hmm. Boseron. Yeah. Am I yeah. saying it properly? Um, but I grew up with um, with Dobermans when I was little, but they were actually imported from Germany and guard dogs. So they were not our pets at all. They were in Ecuador. They were kept in kennels and fed a raw food diet, which is so like, you know, ahead of the times. They would We would go to the grocery store and buy these huge bones with like the meat still on them. They would boil it, make them bone broth, all this stuff, feed them, but we could never be anywhere near them because they were not safe for kids. Um, and one of them was named Prince which was probably a very um, benign name for a dog of his <laughs> life. <laughs> but they are majestic. They're beautiful. All right. Least favorite breed. Oh, I don't know if I should answer that one. <laughs> well, the reason I ask this is to normalize that not all breeds are for all people. And just because mm -hmm. you love dogs doesn't mean you're going to have every breed in your house. It's not always for you. So it's totally okay to be like, that's just not a dog for me. I will say for me in the line of work I do, it's German Shepherds. And I only say that because that's the dog I see the most. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is I think it's there's so many different things going on with the breeding and the behaviors because I love German Shepherds actually. They're gorgeous. Um, yes. And uh, it's actually one of my favorite dogs to work with. They're the only dog that can do everything well. So they herd, they guard. They do nose work. They do like everything really well, you know. So they could, they do out of all the breeds. They do, they kind of excel at all those things. However, they also excel at aggression, aggressive yeah. behavior. Since in a lot of my cases, so not for every owner. At least the pairing of owner and particular German Shepherd has to be good. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 Those powerful breeds. You have to know what you're getting before you get into them. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean. Uh, Chihuahuas are the, probably the most popular answer for that, which is probably like, you know, like your most benign bite would probably be from a Chihuahua, but it's still a very popular breed as far as being like least favorite breed, because I also think that that takes the right owner as well. It is. And Chihuahuas, I feel so bad for Chihuahuas because they get, they just get tormented all over the planet, including on social media and TikTok. They are just like, the, they always get tortured for comedy or for yes. likes and follows and it's ridiculous so leave the chihuahuas alone treat them nicely stop making silly videos that's my comment on chihuahuas i know you know what i feel like my next dog which is not going to be anytime soon but i live in el paso right on the border with juarez which is in chihuahua the region and chihuahuas are obviously very popular here and i think i'm going to rescue a chihuahua next because i kind of I look forward to learning why there's such a little handful. And I consider myself like a chihuahua a little bit. I'm short, I'm feisty. When you said aggression, like humans are aggressive. I'm like, yeah, I'm no stranger to aggression. Trust, trust me. So I feel like I feel like I would be like, the, the my spirit animal is a chihuahua. So I think I need to live with one for a while. All right, do your pets sleep in your bed? Yes, oh yeah. Both of them. Why not? 
It depends. You know, it's funny. I'm actually allergic to cats. So Bernardo and I, my cat, have like a love hate relationship. <laughs>、um, as long as he doesn't try to sleep on my head, we're good because you know that's probably bad for my health. He's、yes. sleeping on my face. So yeah, he doesn't do that anymore. But he does sleep in between my legs just because I give off a lot of heat while I'm sleeping. <laughs> And so yeah, so my issues with my lower back is all because of him because I'm always like I don't want to disturb him because you know. I'm, just, I'm like that, so I've got him in between my legs all night long, and I don't want to move because I don't want to wake him up. So I'm trying to like adjust. Just the top half is adjusting. So yeah, his pet sleep in the bed, totally fine with me. You know. Yeah, you're not concerned about the whole like I asked、uh, Doctor Packle like、uh, dogs, you know, thinking they're the boss because they live they sleep on the bed. You're not concerned about that at all. N- not at all. They're just looking for the comfiest spot in、yes. the house, which is usually bed, and usually, you know, sleeping next to something else warm, like my feet or my、yeah. legs with Bernardo. So, <laughs> I just want to clarify for anybody watching that、um, Mike inherited his pets, so he didn't get to choose his dog and cat. He they came with his girlfriend Moira. So when you were dating Moira and you found out she had a cat, what would you think? Like, oh no, is that a deal breaker? I'm allergic to cats. How are we going to keep uh, moving uh, forward? He, yeah.、So So I'm allergic to them as long as I'm not like shoving them in my face. I'm okay, okay you know. So,、uh, but but sometimes yeah, it bothers me, especially like when it gets dry, like the the dander. You can see it like、oh, like you know going off in here if somebody's stomping their feet on the ground. And so yeah, it gets to me, but not, it's not that bad. So yeah, you know, it was it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> sure it was. All right, who or what wakes you up in the morning? Um, nothing really. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to like not have to wake up to an alarm clock anymore. You know, you just gotta make your own schedule. But、um, it really depends between Mari and I who like gets up first. Like if she's got clients or if I've got something. But it's, it, we're definitely late risers. Are you? <laughs> We get up at like nine or ten. That's the great thing about Castania is she actually. Is not one of those early dogs that's like feed me now. You know, it's seven a.m. She's actually like just just like us. Just like all right, you know, it could be like ten. It could be like she's not on schedule for the morning at all as far as the eating, which is great because all I've had my whole life is dogs that are like it's seven eight seven a.m. Dude. Oh yeah. And like pouncing on top of your head in the bed because、yeah. they want to be fed. I have a I have a senior dog. Who's? I mean, he's like toward the end of his life, and there is a bark, a, like a almost bark. He's lost his bark, so it's like an almost bark at five thirty in the morning, like woo, because he's like that. And if I don't go down that stairway immediately, there is an accident down there. So yes, I. What makes me up in the morning? Titans half bark for sure. All right,、uh, what is this one? I love asking dog trainers this. I ask all my guests this, but I really like to ask my dog trainer guests this. What is your most used training command or cue with your dog, Castanya? Ooh,、um, probably the recall. So come or Ben, and, Ben, you know Spanish, and、uh, yeah, because because we do a whole lot of hiking in this area. So like the, the, the dogs can be off leash in some parts. They have like some areas around here in Canada, beautiful like little parks and trails to hike on. So, but we want to be polite to everybody. So, if we see another dog coming or something, we always call her back. So, and she, and she is an ace. Fortunately, no, no training for me. That's all Mario trained her to do. That I did none of the training, but she's an ace with that recall. Like you know, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, she's good. So that's the one I use most of the time. All that, right. So, I know, so Castanya is too much. is bilingual. Yes. Yes. Good for you. I can't even get my kids to be bilingual. <laughs> I've been trying. I've been trying to learn Spanish for at least the last three years, and I'm failing miserably. Even with all the apps and being able to sit down during the pandemic and try it, I'm just I don't know what it is. I can't. I'm, I'm having trouble. My ha- my husband's actually learning, and he has an app. I forget which one he uses. And yesterday, I was. Cleaning up the kitchen, and I come up the stairs, and I hear him talking. And the kids are asleep, and our dogs are downstairs. And I'm like, "Is he talking?" And and I come in, and I'm like, "Who are you talking? Are you talking to me? Who are you talking to?" And then he's like, "No, I didn't say anything." And then I go about my business, and I and I hear him say something again. And then I realize he's repeating whatever the app is saying. <laughs> he was just、like、repeating, and he didn't even realize he was saying it out loud. And I'm like, "You are speaking. You're making me think like I'm crazy, but you're speaking. You're just repeating those things." All right, what is your least used training commander cue? And I ask this: Which one is one you don't use that you wish you used more, or one that you refuse to use because you just don't, you can't get your head around it? Oh,、um, that's a good question. 
Cause she just got I'm trying to totally spoil her. She gets a lot she gets away with everything with me, whereas Mar is more kinda like the one that makes sure she doesn't I'm bad. I like literally she like there's nothing. Like she eats off my plates, like all the bad oh habits like goodness. a lot of trainers don't like to do. Like I like ask her to jump up on me, I ask her to yeah, eat off my plates, I you know, all those things that, that you know, you're not supposed to do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I she's she's totally spoiled, so that's I can't wonderful. Really think of anything I tell her. She, she doesn't. I never say no to her. Like, you know, Is she a big she's dog? So good. Yeah, she's like 65, 70 pounds. She's tall, lanky, kind of. Um, you know, she's. It, she, a lot of people think she's a lab slash greyhound mix because okay. she's so fast, so fast, and uh, so she's got that speed, but she's also tall. You know, kind of looks like a black lab. So, oh, cool. Yeah. But she's a sweet. She's she's really quite. She doesn't do anything wrong. So. Yeah, you know, so she has so privileges. That's what I said. <laughs> yes, she yeah. earned her privileges. Okay, what pet-related noise do you love? I like when dogs breathe. <laughs> that sounds weird. You like to hear but, them breathe? <laughs> because with my aggression cases, the dogs that are the scariest are the ones that hold their breath just before they bite you. So they like, And the quiet ones, the stoic ones. So... I, you know, I love dogs that bark, lunge, growl because they're telling you to move away so you don't have to like second guess them. Whereas the dogs that are like, okay, I've been punished for growling or barking, so I'm going to sit here stoically and wait for you to get just close enough. And when you do, you hear like that moment of silence and then you know, uh oh, I'm, I've got to move quickly or I'm done for here. And sure enough, usually the bite happens after that or the attempted bite. So, yeah, I like when dogs are like, like you can hear or at least see a tongue hanging out because when they close their mouth and their nostrils, like you can see it, the nostrils like, burp, then the bite's about to happen. So, wow, that yeah. is fascinating. I think that might be my favorite answer to that question. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense. And we're not trained to understand that, but I mean, that must send chills down your spine when you feel that like tension. Yeah, happen. You, you know when you see it. If you, if Yikes. You see it enough times. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. All right, what pet related noise do you hate? Um, something that annoys you or something that scares you? I would say it's the deep breath before the fight. Okay. Because that you will also hear that. You know, they almost, it's almost like they're like, you know, like when you get like the opposite when a dog sighs, like they get into bed and like, you hear that deep breath. And you're like, oh, that's, you know, because they're so, they're just chilling and relaxing. So you love that sound, but it's the opposite. They're like, like almost like a stern, somebody like about to get really mad at you. So yes. Like, and then they hold their breath for a second. So that, that's the sound I'm like. Yes, yes, yes. Something. What do you, what do you want? What are you going to do? <laughs> That's, that's something about to go down. All right. So what pet related profession other than behavior consultant, dog trainer, expert in your field, would you want to try one day? Astronaut. <laughs> pet related. Pet related. Oh, pet related. Yes. You can have a pet related astronaut. I don't see. Only if you're like handling there. pets in space. <laughs> oh, pet related. All right. Uh, probably veterinarian veterinary surgeon though because i love surgery like Ooh. weird like that i love watching like the surgery the you know human surgery shows and stuff because i love the intricacies and the detail and, and uh i don't know it's, it's always fascinated me so like like a brain surgeon for dogs would be if i could if there was such a thing which there, i imagine there is at this point and to some degree but yeah to the same degree and like the, how they're doing with humans would love to do that but are you an artist another time I have a creative side. My mother's an artist. Oh, okay. So that's where I get that from. Yeah, yeah. I, I do believe surgeons are artists. So, you know, putting together a little puzzle, making it better. Sometimes, you know, yeah. connecting new dots. All right. What pet related profession would you never want to try? Uh, poop scooping. Do you ever hear those? Yeah. Yeah. Companies? Yeah. Like poop scooping. Like yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah, popular one, but you know what's interesting is is veterinarian is a popular one for not wanting to do it. I, I can totally see that. Totally, totally see that. Yeah. Shout out to all the veterinarians out there mm -hmm. because it is not an easy thing. It's yes, not easy. Well, there's many, many things that make that job not easy. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout yes. out to all the vets. And yes, poop scooping is a popular one too. I I, I always imagine uh, the poop that's just been sitting there for two weeks. 
and like you know because they don't come every day well yeah because i learned that when i had eight or ten foster dogs at a time and labs so large dogs leaving poop in your backyard adds up quickly yes, quickly <laughs> and then and then it's just like if it rains it's like sm- mm. Mm-mm. yeah Mm-mm. no yeah no so so it's better we- in the winter when it's frozen it's easier yeah. to pick up it's so much easier but then you're cold and you know steam picking up steamy poos <laughs> is not fun either uh all right so this is the last question where we get a little more introspective um, in on the show, um, James Lipton would ask, when, "If heaven exists, when you arrive at the pearly gates, what does God say when He greets you?" Um, so my question is, if the Rainbow Bridge exists, who is the first pet to greet you when he, you arrive? Mm. I'm gonna say it's my first Doberman. Yeah, I would say it's my. Whoa, that's gonna be. Ah. So I gotta, I gotta think hard about this. So it's gonna be gonna be my first Doberman because he was my first like dog as a when I was considered myself a trainer. So this Got was it. even like I had tons of foster dogs, and so I, you know, we had that connection, you know, like that first, you know, heart dog, you know, and uh, he was just like a stellar, awesome dog. Really, just couldn't ask for a better Doberman in my life. And then um, is that or my first dog, Lassie? No, not Lassie, uh, Sarge, who looked like Lassie. Oh, okay. He was a collie, and uh, he put up with so much crap from me. Like, like as a kid, this is when I was being, you know, when I was a kid doing stupid kid things to a dog with no supervision. And he just was so tolerant, and now that I look back, he's going to be like, look at you now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> get to those gates. I'm like, look what you've become. Why didn't you do that when you were six years old, you know, pinching my ears? And so, yeah, so I'm looking up saying, apologizing to Sarge. Because <laughs> he was a good dog. Such a good dog. Just so tired. Because he could have bitten my face off plenty of times for all the stuff I did as a stupid kid. But Are they all, like, I the only, like, Lassie-type dogs that I know were such gentle creatures. Are they, ten- do they tend to be like that? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen a Collie in a long time in my line of work. So it says something. Yeah, yeah. And, but there's a lot of grooming to be done there. That is true. <laughs> yes, yes. You gotta find something in between for me. Something more practical, but also <laughs> sweet and gentle. Somewhere in between. Somehow I'm gonna end up with a chihuahua, but we'll see. So thank you so much. That is all I have for you. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. I loved getting to know you. I followed you for years and I wish you nothing but success. Thank you again for all you do for the pets, for the dogs and for their families. Thank you so much for having me.